Back in 2018, I went to the Tate Modern in London. I remember entering a crowded room and feeling surprised at the sight of one of my favorite works of the 20th century on display. It was the first and last time I saw it in person and, well, you know, nobody was paying attention to it. I got closer and noticed it was placed under a glass case, protected from the public. I felt a bit sad knowing the story behind it. Today I will talk about one of the best Brazilian artists ever and her revolutionary series of works. Lisa Pimentel Lins, better known as Lisa Clark, was a Brazilian artist born in Belo Horizonte in 1920, often associated with the Brazilian constructivist movements of the mid 20th century and Tropicalia, an artistic movement that interested in mixing the popular and the avant-garde, as well as the melding of Brazilian tradition and foreign traditions and styles. Clark co-founded the Neo Concrete Movement. This was a group of intellectuals and creatives interested in how art could be used to express complex human realities beyond the traditional way of expressing one's emotions in art. They wanted to push the limits of what art represented. For them, the art is the actual process of doing, and it is during this interaction that the spectator truly experiences what the artwork means. At the age of 40, Clark began making artworks the public could interact with physically, sculptors entitled bichos or critters, which are ingenious arrangements of hinged metal plates that can fold flat or be unfolded into three dimensions and manipulated into many different configurations. Interacting with these works, the spectators were meant to become more aware of their physical body and metaphysical existence. Viewer participation was essential for the artwork to be complete. In fact, Clark referred to the audience as participants rather than viewers. According to the artist, the exchange between viewer and Bicho is a dialogue between two living organisms. I love these works because they offer a fresh perspective on the relationship between humans and technology. These sculptures are activated by the public who stops being a passive audience to become um, active participants. This is a series of sculptures I always show in my courses about contemporary digital art to demonstrate how one doesn't need to master cutting-edge software and hardware to make insightful interactive art. These works are beautiful despite or maybe because they are made of cheap industrial materials. Now you know why I felt so moody that day in London when I found one of these sculptors under a glass case. It truly felt like a bird closed in a cage. I left that room with a moody feeling, knowing how much joy and creativity the artist put into it, envisioning the interaction with the visitors. This is a lesson that contemporary artists may want to learn. A work designed to be interactive will likely lose this potentiality once it will become part of art history, both protected and caged to be preserved. Thanks for watching, it was great to receive so much support in the last few days. As always, please, please, please feel welcome to tell me which artist or works you would like me to cover in the next weeks by commenting this video. Take care, ciao, ciao.